Hello, my name is Laura Gu, and in this video we're going to talk about using a reporter gene. We will first introduce the general idea of what a reporter gene is, and then we will specifically discuss how the chloramphenicol acetyltransferase reporter gene is used. We will end with a real example of how a reporter gene assay was used in an experiment to study gene expression driven by the P10 promoter. This video has been made as a resource for MCDB 427, Molecular Biology at the University of Michigan. Let's say you want to study the expression of your favorite gene under the control of a certain promoter. However, your gene of interest produces a protein that may not be conveniently measured for whatever reason. In this case, you would use a reporter gene assay. A reporter gene produces a protein that is easily detectable. For example, a luciferase reporter protein will bioluminesce and that can be quantified with more ease than most other protein products. Other common examples include GFP, or green fluorescent protein, which is shown here, and LAC-Z, which is often used for blue-white screening. After deciding on what reporter you are going to use, you would then clone your promoter into the multiple cloning site of a plasmid containing the reporter gene. Now, the reporter gene is under the control of your gene of interest promoter. By then measuring the activity of the reporter gene product, you can determine the promoter's effect on transcription. Reporter gene assays generally work as follows. First, you begin with your gene of interest with its upstream regulatory sequence, such as a promoter. Second, you clone this regulatory sequence upstream of a reporter gene in a plasmid. Now this promoter will drive the expression of the reporter. You then transfect the reporter gene construct into the cells of your choice. The cell will now transcribe the reporter gene into an mRNA and subsequently translate it into a protein product. This protein will produce some type of signal that is easily measured. In this video, we will focus on a widely used reporter gene that produces the enzyme called chloramphenicol acetyltransferase, or CAT. Under normal growth conditions, bacterial cells proliferate rapidly. Bacterial growth is affected by an antibiotic called chloramphenicol, which we will abbreviate as CAM. Specifically, CAM inhibits protein synthesis by preventing the formation of peptide bonds. If we add CAM, we see that bacterial growth is severely inhibited. In response to the effects of the CAM antibiotic, bacteria have developed a defense mechanism, utilizing the previously mentioned CAT enzyme. This enzyme functions by acetylating the CAM antibiotic. This acetylation inhibits CAM's activity and prevents the antibiotic from acting on bacteria cells effectively. Now, bacteria cells can grow at normal rates. Eukaryotes, unlike bacteria, are not susceptible to the CAM antibiotic. Therefore, they have not had any need to develop the CAT enzyme as a defense mechanism. This is crucial to CAT's use as a reporter gene in eukaryotes. If the CAT enzyme was endogenous in eukaryotic cells, this would cause unwanted background signal. Since CAT is indeed not endogenous in eukaryotic cells, we expect these cells to normally have zero expression and activity of the CAT enzyme. Therefore, any CAT activity is due to transcription from the promoter on the plasmid. We will now go into the specifics of how a CAT reporter gene assay can be performed. The first step to perform this assay is to remove the promoter from your gene of interest. In this case, we are interested in gene X's promoter. Next, we will clone this promoter into the multiple cloning site of a vector upstream of the cat gene. As a result, the cat gene will now be under the control of gene X's promoter. Now, we are ready to put this construct into eukaryotic cells. These cells are depicted by the purple circles. We will use a special method called transfection to insert our vector into the eukaryotic cells. After successfully transfecting the vector into the eukaryotic cells, they will transcribe and translate the gene to produce the CAT enzyme. We will then harvest the proteins from these cells in an extract. The protein solution will contain the CAT enzyme, any other proteins that were encoded for on the expression vector, as well as all of the cellular proteins produced from the eukaryotic cells. For the sake of simplicity, we are only portraying the CAT enzyme in this picture. The next step is to wait for the reaction to occur. Within the protein mixture are many molecules of the CAT enzyme. As previously mentioned, CAT is an acetyltransferase, meaning it will take the acetyl group from the acetyl-CoA provided and transfer it to CAM. 
By the end of our reaction, our solution will contain the following. Carbon-14 labeled CAM that has been acetylated by the CAT enzyme. There will also be unacetylated carbon-14 labeled CAM that has not had the chance to react with CAT. There will be both free and bound CAT enzyme. There will be excess acetyl-CoA. And lastly, there will be CoA that has had its acetyl group removed. The focus of our assay will be the acetylated carbon-14 labeled CAM. The amount of this acetylated CAM corresponds to the amount of CAT enzyme that was in the extract. In order to effectively separate and quantify the acetylated CAM from the unacetylated CAM, we will use a technique called thin layer chromatography. We will first spot our samples at the bottom of a plate, like so, and this will be referred to as the origin. We will then dip the bottom of this plate in a mobile phase solvent. This solvent will be drawn up the plate through capillary action and the different components of the sample spotted will be separated on the basis of polarity. The radio labeling that will be used to identify CAM is invisible to the naked eye, so audio radiography is required to visualize the samples on the plate. In our cartoon example, unacetylated but still radioactively labeled CAM remains near the bottom of the plate. However, the acetylated radioactively labeled versions of CAM will travel much further up the plate. You may notice that there are two spots corresponding to acetylation in the third lane. The diacetylated form of CAM is represented by the band closest to the top of the plate and is also circled in red. The once acetylated form is right below it circled in blue. Higher CAT activity in this lane is a direct result of higher activity in the promoter. In this mock example, the first lane could correspond to a control with no cell extract. Lane 2 could be the wild type GeneX promoter, while lane 3 could represent a mutation in the GeneX promoter which actually increases its activity. In this experiment, cells from the army worm moth were exposed to the ACNPV virus, which resulted in the expression of a certain gene. This gene was controlled by the P10 promoter. Using a reporter gene assay, we will examine the transcription activity of this promoter by substituting the gene of interest with CAT. The reporter gene construct that was transfected into these cells was altered in a number of ways, and depending on the conditions introduced to the reporter gene construct, different relative CAT activity levels were observed. This was a direct result of changes in expression of the P10 promoter. There were four conditions total that were observed in this experiment. In lane 1, no promoter was present, meaning the construct transfected into the cells only contained the cat gene. In condition 2, the promoter was present, so the construct contained the P10 promoter which controlled the expression of the cat gene. In condition 3, not only was the promoter present, but an enhancer element was included as well. Lastly, condition 4 contained the promoter and the enhancer element was moved to a different position. Here we present to you actual experimental results. We have the audio radiograph, where you can visualize radioactively labeled CAM and its acetylated derivatives. Through liquid scintillation of the radioactive samples, we can also report the relative CAT activity values associated with each condition. As you can see in the first lane, there was no CAT activity in the absence of the P10 promoter. We can see that the relative CAT activity is at zero, meaning no expression of CAT has occurred, and unacetylated radioactively labeled CAM remains at the bottom of the plate. The rest of the lanes have been conducted in duplicates. The addition of the promoter in condition 2 did not significantly increase CAT activity to the point of acetylating CAM. The relative CAT activity is reported here at 0.7. In condition 3, there is sufficient expression of CAT at a relative activity level of 43, and the movement of the enhancer in condition 4 does not reduce the functioning of the promoter, but actually increases its relative CAT activity to 85. We can conclude from this data that the enhancer is necessary for transcription from the P10 promoter, and that the enhancer can be moved and still function. We hope we were able to clarify the use of the chloramphenicol acetyltransferase reporter gene in this video. Thanks for watching, and go blue!